Hello my friends and welcome back. My name is Hannah and today um, let's talk about my monthly favorites. So if you're curious about what I will be wearing on my face, what I mentioned in today's video, which will be what I'm wearing on my face, what I'm doing in other pockets of the internet, I always have the links in the description box down below. So don't forget to check them out. Um, my links are not sponsored or affiliated as I am a small time creator. So your shopping queen links if you do decide to shop my links. Um, but let's let's get into it because I'm going to do a full face of all the things that I've been gravitating towards this month and kind of how I've been doing my makeup this month. Um, when it gets to eyeshadows, I'm going to do one eye on camera, the other one off camera. And um, let's let's just get into it. So to start my look, I always do my brow gel first. Um, I have been using aloe gel first and then using my um, gel to kind of place the hairs. But I've already washed my face for today. So my gel, I didn't comb it through either. So I'm just going in with the gel first. Um, I'm using my trusty Patrick Ta. This is my favorite brow gel of all time. It is on the pricier side, but I mean, when did I buy this last? Like in December, I think, or November? Um, it does last quite some time. And I just kind of flick the hairs in motion and then I lay it flat to lock in that shape. I like the Super Saiyan brows. Okay, and then I have been using the uh, e.l.f. Uh, Power Grip with niacinamide in it, the pink one, and I it could be because I don't have like too many other, it's like I'm usually gravitating towards the Milk Hydro Grip or the uh, Nabla Angel Aura, but I've really been enjoying this primer, and my makeup doesn't age poorly with this product um, and I don't really see much of a difference. I will say though in my oilier t-zone I do have to touch that up because it does look very like porous after the you know my work shift but other than that I mean I feel like that's kind of normal. I will say I don't know if I've noticed any like skin care properties like I don't know if the niacinamide is really doing anything to control the redness in my skin but this one compared to the other ones, I think sits better on my skin and reacts better or like doesn't react to the products. Like, I don't know. I, I know with the Milk Hydro Grip, you're supposed to lay it down, let it sit and do its thing before you put makeup on it so it doesn't pill. And I've never had a problem with pilling with the Milk, with the milk Hydro Grip, but the e.l.f. primers, I never, never got them to really work for me. But this one is really nice. But again, like I said, I don't know if I really noticed the element, like the niacinamide element in it, like really controlling any of the redness. It just sits really nicely on my skin. So as I let that do its thing, let's go in and do my brows. Um, I have been loving the NYX uh, Lift and Snatch pen, but I've been using the shade Espresso this month. So when I first bought these, I got the shade Espresso and the shade ash brown because I like to do, I have thicker brows, so I just like to do a lighter shade to kind of add a little bit of dimension to my brow. Espresso is more like the shade of my brow, but I don't know, I I feel like the ash brown was like too light and kind of too contradicting to whatever bleach job I have right now. So I'm gonna go in with Espresso and I just flick it in the motion of my hair growth. And it's mostly in the tails that I focus a majority of the product. And that's where I have a little bit of like the, I don't know, patchier spots of my eyebrow, but I don't really have like patchy eyebrows either. I don't pluck, I don't pluck, I don't do anything to my eyebrows and I've never done anything to my eyebrows. That's why they're as thick and as prominent as they are. Um, because I, again, I say this time and time again, I come from a family where I've seen my relatives over pluck their brows and how they don't have eyebrows now. So I just said, I want to have eyebrows, so I'm not going to touch them. And I'm kind of amazed that that's the best advice I've ever given myself. Okay, so now that my primer is kind of set down, 
I love the Sephora Best Skin Ever. Um, I think I got this on recommendation from Angelica Nevis. Like she meant she did like a best in the US like video a few years ago and picked up this product and she said it was similar to I forget what foundation she compared it to, but I think it was a foundation that I was using at that time or something that I was like interested in or maybe had a sample of. But I like how this is a medium coverage, but it's more of like a gel consistency. So the way that it sits on my skin is really nice and I don't really notice, like it doesn't have a weight to it and I don't really notice that I'm wearing it. Um, I do set it with powder. I don't know if I necessarily need to do that. I just like more of like the airbrushed effect. But it is a really pretty foundation and I do one pump and like that's all I need. And I can use it with a brush. I can use it with a sponge. It doesn't matter. Right now I've been on a big like sponge kick. I think because I was on a big brush kick for a while. Um, and the current sponge that I'm using is from Sephora, but it was like their strawberry collection and I believe it's discontinued. Right now they have a mushroom one and I don't know if all Sephora sponges are made of like the same material, but this has been one of my favorite sponges to use. So I've been washing this one every day just so I can like keep it a little bit longer than I keep my normal brushes. And then for concealer, I've actually been going into the NARS Soft Matte Concealer. This one has been my favorite. Um, I, I feel like the ones that I have in particular in my hand are fairly old. Like this was the only makeup product that I was using during my time of not wearing makeup. So when I worked at Disney, I wasn't allowed to wear too many different shades of things and I didn't really care to do a whole full face of makeup to do like a eight plus hour shift in the day. So I just wanted something that may cover up a little bit of redness or acne or whatever when I needed it. So I have one that's a brightening shade and then I have one that is like actually like my skin tone. Um, and I mean, I, I kind of go in phases when I love this product and then I kind of forget about it. But now I'm back in the phase of loving it. And if you like the Sigma um, eye primer, I think this is kind of similar to that because I think you can kind of use the Sigma eye primer in the same way. Like I feel like it has the same kind of coverage and it has the same effect on eyeshadow. So for a while this was like my go-to primer as well. But I just kind of use this to brighten up my face and it goes well with this concealer. Usually this kind of like pot concealer I would use first and then put product on top of it like a skin tint because it is a little bit thicker. But going over that more like gel-like foundation, I don't, I don't have any problems with it. And it blends in really nicely. And I just take it across my nose and just kind of cover up what I can. Any patchy, like any weird, I have redness in my nose that always shines through. So when I say patchiness, it's just, I have the red spots that like the foundation alone can't cover. I could color correct it, but then am I going to go and buy a color correcting concealer? Like, am I going to go through all of that trouble? Maybe, possibly. I feel like color correcting is kind of coming back. Like, color correcting and contour, I've seen a lot more this year as far as, like, releases and things have been going. So, I might pick one up. We'll see. Um, okay, and then... What have I... What do I do next? Um, usually, I go in... I go in with my face powder. I have been loving the Sephora, what is this called? Uh, Multitasking Baked Face Powder. This has been my go-to. But if this was like the first half of the month, the second half of the month has actually been the NYX um, High Glass. This is a discontinued product. So I mean, I don't really want to talk about this product, but I kind of do because I like it. So this is kind of what I've been doing with this product. I will set my foundation with it and I go in with the uh, F37 from Sigma, it's the Spotlight Duster and I dust it over my foundation because this isn't like a highlight, this is just, it's a setting powder but it has like a shine to it. And I work it in. And then I go in with the Sephora and using that same brush, I'll walk it in on top 
So then the NYX setting powder doesn't look like I just wiped a foundation all over my skin. It's kind of like a glow from within. Um, I guess you could just use like a liquid highlighter as like a primer and get the same effect. But I guess if you didn't have one and you had like a glowy kind of setting powder like that, I don't know. What caused me to do this originally? I don't know. I think it's because I caught the highlight in my forehead one time and I'm like, oh my gosh, it's going to look crazy on camera. And then it didn't, but then I put the powder on it anyway and it looked good. Okay. And then using, going in with my NYX banana powder, this is always like a monthly favorite. I don't know, like I should probably maybe try other powders, but this one is like my tried and true. So why would I try anything else? Like I think it'd be really hard for another brand to really impress me with their setting powder. Cause all the concealers that I use, this product works really well with it. And I have a Dior concealer, I have a NYX concealer and a NARS concealer and all of them look pretty dang good. Okay, for my bronzer, I've been loving two products this month. The ColourPop I'll Bet and then this Physicians Formula Matte uh, Monoe like butter bronzer. This is for, this is a mini. I got this, I ordered something and I got this as like a, like a sample gift. And I don't know if this is like my shade. I, I don't know, let's go in with it and so I can show you. Cause it looks really light in the pan, but then when I put it on, it looks really nice. Is this just me realizing I've been using the wrong shade? I don't think that I'm fairly fair. Like I'm kind of light to medium. Although living out here in the desert, like they have, like, I don't know, it's snowing right now. Like I'm in the middle of a storm. Um, and I've been very sun deprived this winter. Like it's just been rainy and cold and overcast. And I don't know, like I've always lived in California my whole life. I've lived in the Bay Area. I lived in Orange County and now I live in the desert. So this is very bizarre for me to live in the desert and this is where I have snow of all the places that I've lived. But it's a beautiful bronzer and I'm not a huge fan of Physicians Formula but this is a beautiful bronzer. I'll go in with a little bit of I'll Bet just to kind of deepen it. I think what I like about this the lighter shade is that it adds a little bit of dimension to my face without being too obvious and I think it looks better in person than it does on camera. Like on camera it's probably not too noticeable. So let's give myself a fake tan and add a little bit of this ColourPop one. Kind of pseudo contour my nose a little bit. Um, what am I gonna do for cheeks? Oh, I do know. Um, I have been loving the Super Shock blushes. The shade in particular is not the one that I've been reaching for the most. Um, this is the shade Chiffon. I just reach for whatever eyeshadow look I'm kind of going for that day or lack of eyeshadow look, like maybe whatever outfit I'm wearing because sometimes I don't really do an eyeshadow look for work. Um, I will match my blush to whatever I'm wearing. And I just love the Super Shocks. I think that they're really pretty and I don't necessarily need to use a highlight when using these blushes because they're already so sparkly and shiny. And I kind of like having the dewiness on my cheeks. I mean, I could take this one particularly down like my nose and I do do blush on my nose a lot of the time. But I don't really again need to go too far into highlight but I'm also like not the biggest like highlight enthusiast like um I can I'm okay not wearing it I'm okay skipping that step if I didn't bring a highlighter with me on like a trip or something I'd be okay and if I really wanted a highlight I most likely like reach into an eyeshadow palette if I didn't have one so highlights are one of those versatile products for me but this shade in particular, again, doesn't really have too much like color to it. I just like the shine and the effect. I think what I've really been loving this month is just kind of like contouring and playing with shadows on my face. Um, like I said at the beginning of this year, there's a few cons coming up that like I either like want to participate in or like I want to participate in next year. 
Um, I already have like a list of like cosplays that I want to work on and characters that I do want to cosplay. And so I've kind of just been trying to strengthen my skills after like not doing it for so long. Perfect. Okay, so let's put my eyeshadow primer on. Um, what have I actually been loving? I'm running low on my Sigma um, eyeshadow base. This is the shade Ignite. And I'm nervous because I went to go like pick up like to replace it and it was sold out on the website. And usually when it's sold out on Sigma, I'll go to like Beauty Bay and even on Beauty Bay it was sold out. And I'm like, oh my gosh, are we in a time again? Because I don't know, sometimes this product is like out of stock for months and then it'll be in stock for months. So like, I don't know. Am I just like on the wrong time? That's what I feel like. Uh, and then let's blend this in. Um, I've been trying to do my makeup more for work, kind of, you know, going a little bit more uh, put together. Because a lot of the time, I don't care to kind of, I don't need makeup to feel pretty. I don't, but I like to wear it. To, I don't know, to, I guess to kind of like flex. I work with a lot of older people and they give me a lot of grief about looking so young and because I work in the school district I get a lot of like comments about looking like one of the students you know and it kind of like it annoys me for lack of a better word it just annoys me so I try my best to I don't know not like necessarily look mature but just to be pretty but like I said I don't need makeup to feel pretty I just I hate that like my naked face is compared to like a kid's face like that's weird to me because I'm a grown woman that does well I didn't say does grown woman experiences but I just finished watching like the newest Gretzko season and Buddy Daddies and I'm wearing an anime t-shirt and most of the time I do wear an anime t-shirt to work so um, even though I have the personality of like the 12 year old kids in my school district I'm not a 12 year old kid I don't know what possessed me to have the mini Biba be my most, most reach for palette this month, but I've just really been loving it. This cream to matte shade in particular, or this matte, yeah, is that what it's called? Cream to matte? Um, it's just, it's a special formula that Natasha Denona has that I don't think any other brand does as well as Natasha Denona. Um, so what I usually do is I'll go in with the lighter shade and I pop that just in my crease, like, I don't know. I know people call this like the transition shade, but I don't really use it as a transition shade. I just have it in the crease of my eye. Like I just wanna create the shadow and the shape because once I, I lay down this shade in particular to map out my eye shape, and then I can build my other shadows on top of it. Is that what a transition shade is? Am I showing how I don't know, makeup illiterate I am, probably, but that's okay. Um, and then I go in with the cream to matte formula and I apply that in the outer corner and I just sweep that in like so. I don't really have like a rhyme or reason. I just, I don't know. I do this for a few minutes before I have to leave and then it looks fine. I just blend until I feel like it's blended enough. And then I take a flat brush and do I want to go with the pink shade or do I want to go with the brown shade? I'll go with the pink shade. And I take a lighter shade and I take that on the lid. And I just pack and blend. And then going back with that original brush, I just kind of soften that blending line. And then go back in with that cream to matte shade and then I'll take a little bit of that deeper tone and just flick that into the outer corner. 
this is mostly for when like I get home from work and I gotta film something because a lot of the time I just do the three shades and call it a day but this is pretty much the look that I do like so um, I'm gonna do my mascara and my other eye off of camera and then I'll come back and I'll talk about the mascara that I like to use um, the lip products that I like to use and we'll wrap up this video okay so I'm back um, let's talk about the mascara I have been using the L'Oreal telescopic lift mascara yes I picked this up to try it to um, give you guys an impression um, yes, I did kind of fall into the popular trend that this mascara caused, but I will say I do like this mascara. It is, I think there's a little bit of a learning curve because it is one of those mascaras where it's flat on one side and then it has a smaller brush and then the longer bristles on the side. So very much like the Pillow Talk mascara, you're supposed to use the flat end to kind of get the product into the like base of your lash and then you use the longer sides to comb it through so it's kind of like a um, like a holding kind of uh, mascara it's really pretty and it does last like all day and it's pretty nice I will say though like if I don't apply it correctly I would have been better off using just a different mascara I do find that the bristles are a little bit shorter the Charlotte Tilbury wand is a lot easier to get right into your eye without poking your eye out. Um, I have poked my eye quite a number of times with this mascara. So, I don't know. I like it, but I don't. But I do use the waterproof version of that because I do have straight, heavier lashes. Um, and I don't know. I guess those are my final thoughts and opinions on that product as well. Like, I think it's worth it if you needed a new mascara, you know, and you were just looking for something that maybe holds your lash. And it does add drama to it. But if you don't, like I said, if you don't apply it correctly, like on this side, I didn't get the base like as close to the like lash line as I could, like as close as I got it on this eye. This one does look a little bit wonky, like it just looks flatter, but that's because it's whole, like all the product is at like the curve of the lash instead of at the base of the lash. Um, my lip liner I've been loving this month. I love these Melt Perfectionist lip liners. And I saw that these were like on sale on their website and I'm like, are they discontinuing these? But then I found out that Melt was just doing like a month long sale. I think the sale is now over by the time that this video is going live, but I got really nervous about them discontinuing these because I like these because they're precise, but you can still like blend it in. I don't have my lip product on yet. I just wanted to show you what the lip liner looked like because it does look very like bold. Like I, I open it as if I'm going to apply it. It does look very bold. But you can like pat it in, blend it in like I have it currently and it does last and it stays all day. Um, I will use this lip liner with a lot of my lip glosses and other types of lip products and as the lip products throughout the day kind of like age and disappear because I, you know, eat lunch, drink water, that kind of thing, the lip liner is still there. So that's really impressive to me. The lipstick I've been reaching for the most is the Charlotte Tilbury uh, Supermodel shade. It's my go-to. I think this is like my favorite nude lipstick of all time. I hope that this isn't limited edition because I really love this shade. I have never loved a bullet lipstick as much as I love this one. It is just so flattering. I can use it with any eyeshadow look. Like I can do a bold, colorful, bright-eyed look and use this lip lipstick, but It is just like one of the most flattering lipsticks of all time. I can do like a super subtle, no eyeshadow look and wear this lipstick alone and it's really pretty. I can use it with a bright colorful look and it's really pretty. It's just my all time favorite. And so these are all the products I've been loving this month. Um, I hope to do a video like this every month so then by the end of the year I can kind of see what I'm like, what I liked and what I didn't like and kind of project better you know because i like to do those end of the year videos where i predict trends and things like that um and kind of go over my year in makeup so hopefully uh december hana is very thankful for february hana 
Um, but let me know in the comments down below or have you been reaching for similar products or maybe the same products? If you don't like the supermodel shade, what is your go-to Charlotte Tilbury shade? Or maybe there's a whole completely different lipstick that you love altogether. I would love to hear your thoughts and opinions down below. And if you liked hanging out with me today and you don't want to miss out, make sure you hit that subscribe button down below so I can see you guys in tomorrow's video. All right, everyone. I, why am I ending so weird and awkward? I already said I'll see you tomorrow. It's storming outside. It's pretty crazy. Um, but I will see you guys tomorrow. Bye. Yeah.